Hello, everybody. Da, 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 a new module. It was inevitable, I suppose. We're back in the Pittsburgh EP96 case, and all of our other familiar friends are here. Uh, this is the only thing that's new, and the reason it is new is because in the last couple of patches I made, I felt like I was running out of musical oscillators. I have several oscillators that make noise, and you can sort of tease a note out of them if you're patient, but as far as getting them to play series of notes in key and in tune, well, it's not happening. Because in order to do that, to play an oscillator in a conventionally musical manner, it needs to be set up and calibrated and built to to track at one volt per octave, which is the Eurorack standard. And I felt like I wanted more melodic content and I didn't have anything that would do it for me. Now, <clears throat> I do have some multi-purpose modules that could potentially do the job. Bastel Tromzu, if you set it up correctly, you can use its timing oscillator as a volts per octave oscillator. Warps, mutable warps has an oscillator in it. And I also discovered recently that the Bifeco Rampage, the EXPCV input, is designed to track one volt per octave. And at high frequencies, the Rampage can be played as a musical oscillator. It makes me wonder if the make noise function can also do that, and I will conduct some experiments and probably make a video about that real soon. But the problem with using a function generator as an oscillator, you can't use it as a function generator, and man, I needs me them envelopes, you know what I'm saying? So uh, that would be like something I would do in an emergency. Also, the Tromzu, if I use it as an oscillator, that kind of rules out to using the bit crushing or sample rate reduction effect. Likewise, with warps, using it as an oscillator means that the, all of the cool cross-modulation effects are pretty much off the table. So, I just decided I should go ahead and get more oscillators, and that's what this is. It is the Circuit Slices CS023 Dual Parallel VCO. Uh, dual Parallel VCO means that there are two of them and they share some functionality between them. Each has three outputs. You got your triangle wave, which is very pure. It's almost a sine wave. There's not a whole lot of harmonic content. You have your sawtooth wave and you have your square wave. The square wave has pulse width modulation. Or, well, you just, there's a pulse width control which you can adjust manually. <clears throat> It doesn't push the pulse width all the way to the limit where the wave goes silent. However, there's a pulse width modulation input <clears throat> and with the accompanying attenuator, turn that up, the pulse width starts to modulate. And it will with enough CV voltage push into that that threshold where the wave goes quiet. Now the pulse width only affects the square wave but it your pulse width modulation input applies to both oscillators. So if I turn on the other oscillator which is over on the left you can hear them both. And there is a frequency modulation input. And it also affects them both. There's a switch to change the FM from linear to exponential.
so that modulation will make the two oscillators move in tandem. Then they share a frequency control, but they have independent fine tuning knobs. So you can tune these to an interval. And they will maintain that interval as they track across the range of the oscillators. And now there is a switch to push oscillator 2 into low, which I think is an octave lower. And tune them in unison. Now there's also a uh, sync input for each oscillator. I don't know completely the difference between hard sync and soft sync, so I'm not sure what is happening here, but what sync does, it resets the cycle of, the, of one oscillator based on the cycle of the other. So, I am using the square wave output of oscillator 2 to sync oscillator 1. And you can get some strange, strange effects that way. If I pull the sink back out, then it should return to our normal uh, sawtooth wave. They track volts per octave, so if I plug a sequence in <clears throat> to this input, both oscillators will move together. I can tune them to an interval. I can tune them in unison, and the interesting thing about this is that I could use two channels of my quantizer and the way the quantizer works whatever note you have your oscillator tuned to <clears throat> is the root note of the scale <coughs> so this volt per octave input is normal to the other one so if you control oscillator 2 you also control oscillator 1 unless patch something into oscillator 1's volts per octave and then it controls separately. If I take out this one then oscillator 2 remains still while oscillator 1 is sequenced. So they can be controlled independently although they share one common basic tuning knob. I thought this was quite interesting. A good way to get two more oscillators for the price of one. And uh, it works and I'll probably be using it in some cool and exciting patches later on. Subscribe if you're interested in that coolness and excitement. And of course, I must thank my patrons because they paid for this. Thanks, you guys. And uh, that's pretty much it. So I'll catch you all next time.